Restarting a mix is actually a pretty easy process. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to the mix console, the big version of the mix console. So to get there, I'm going to go under studio and choose mix console or type the keyboard shortcut of F3. That will reveal the mix console. And then I'm going to look for this first little chevron over here on the upper right hand side of the mix console. I'm going to drop that functions menu open and I'm going to reset the mix console channels. Now, there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. You can either select multiple channels and reset the selected ones. But what I'm going to do is reset all of them. And what that's going to do is remove all of the effects. It's going to remove all the EQ. It's going to remove any channel strip settings that I had. It's going to move the volume faders back to zero and the pan controls back to center. It's going to turn off all the equalizers and that'll reset all of the mix console channels back to kind of a default setting. You may notice that if you have any automation that some of the faders are not actually going to their zero position. And that's probably because you have read automation enabled and that automation data is part of your project. So what I'm going to do is turn off the read automation. Then I'm going to go under the project menu and choose the automation panel or type F6. And then I'm going to find the functions menu here and I'm going to click on that little chevron and I'm going to delete all the automation inside of the project. And once I've done that, I can reset the mix console again because it's going to be really fast. And that is going to reset all of the faders back to their zero position. So now all the automation and the effects and EQs that I had in this project that were so problematic have now been erased. And so now I have more of a blank slate to work with. And there's one other thing I'm going to do here, and that is I'm going to erase all of the group channels and the effects channels because I'm going to rebuild those so that you can see how to do that. And I'm going to select the first effects channel, which is this purple channel, and then I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to select the last of the group channels. But I can't actually remove the groups here. It's easier to do that from the project window. So I'll type F3 and now you can see that my group channel tracks and any effects channels have been selected. Now I can right or control click on those tracks and I'll explain more about the track and channel relationship a little bit later. But for now, I'm going to remove those selected tracks. It's going to ask me if I really want to do that, especially if I have data on them. I'm going to select yes. And now I'll be able to hear this mix because all of the channels that I had going to those groups are now going straight to the stereo output fader. I'm going to drop that fader down a little bit and press play so that we can hear the song now in its original form. Sounds a lot different, doesn't it? Because all of those effects, including any of the guitar amps that were all virtual, those have all been removed from the guitar tracks. Same thing on the bass tracks. Almost everything is dry, there's no reverb, and there's no EQ, and everything is panned dead center. But it's a boring sounding mix, so what I'm going to do throughout this course is show you the treatments that you can use to make a better mix and get it ready for mastering and take you through the mastering process as well. And so now that I've restarted this mix, next I'm going to show you how to get organized.